Hey, I'm uh, Sam Abadir. I'm the CTO of AppMovie, and uh, we'll talk a little bit of mobile right now. We've been talking a lot of uh, desktop HTML5, and uh, I'll keep this quick. I know everybody wants to go drinking, so do I. So we'll, uh, we'll do this quickly. Um, so the truth is, I think and we all know it, browsers weren't built for games, and uh, HTML5 was really built for desktop. Uh, I personally think HTML5 is more important on mobile and want to stretch the limits of what HTML5 can do there in terms of gaming. Um, so what my company did was we provided some acceleration to the Canvas element. And uh, to do that, we had to put it in an alternate element, which we call the direct canvas. It supports a subset of, uh, of canvas, but it's really optimized uh, for gaming. And nothing will make me happier at some point when this isn't needed. Uh, it is a stopgap for the moment, but it's actually pretty effective. Uh, so a couple things to note with, uh, with rendering uh, a game, especially in a browser. The DOM is basically your enemy. So reflow, repositioning, you know, styles and whatnot, things we don't care about, um, but a, a normal web page might. Uh, so what we found is the canvas, <laughs> and it's no surprise, is slow today. Uh, it's especially slow on older, quote, older devices like an iPhone 3GS. Um, and you can get quite a performance improvement if you work around the DOM, actually just bypass the DOM. Um, and we can do this in such a way, basically using some syntactic sugar, so that the same code base can be deployed to desktop. I'll show you that real quick. Um, as mobile, here's a mobile emulator. So this is an HTML5 game written against the director. There it is playing on the desktop. I wanted to show it to you on my iPhone, but that'll be a little small for you guys to see, and we didn't have the right equipment. So if anybody wants to see it on an iPhone using Direct Canvas after this, uh, come grab me. Uh, to use Direct Canvas, we're basically proposing a slightly different way of thinking about how you would architect a game in a browser. Uh, the first is to separate the stuff browsers do well, menuing, um, general page layout, into one context, which is the DOM. And the other one is called the game layer or the Direct Canvas context, uh, where all game rendering, all game play is. Uh, and to do that, you basically just take your JavaScript files, uh, all dependencies on game logic, and put them into index.js uh, and uh, subtrees from there. We created a way for the DOM, the DOM layer to speak to the game layer or the direct canvas layer. Uh, it's really simple. Uh, we called it appmobi.canvas.execute. Hopefully when browsers, uh, if and when browsers start adopting a methodology like this, there'll be a slightly different syntax. Again, it's easy to abstract away with some simple syntactic sugar. Uh, and then, of course, the game layer needs to speak back to the DOM. Uh, that one is just called appmobi.device. Uh, appmobi.webview.execute, uh, and then just pass in the parameter of the function name that needs to be executed at the other layer. Uh, using Direct Canvas, very, very simple. Uh, instead of doing a get context against the normal Canvas element, you do a get context against the AppMobi Canvas element. After that, it's syntactically the same. Oh, one last thing if you're going to do this. And by the way, this is all doable. You can go to uh, our documentation page at appmobi.com forward slash documentation and play with this stuff. It's pretty fun. Uh, but in your render loop, you would 
do a my context, that's what I call the variable here, dot present. Uh, that forces the actual rendering. So just to reiterate that stuff, we're moving all the rendering into the game logic layer. Uh, all sub-included uh, JS files are done using a, an additional include syntax, which we created called context.include. Uh, and finally, because there's two layers going on at the same time, a interactivity layer, where, well, a user input layer, the DOM layer, and the, can and the direct canvas layer, um, you have to make sure that the canvas is visible. So the body can't have, the body of the DOM layer can't have a background, it can't have an opacity to it. It has to basically be transparent. So you have to remove styling on the body that would prevent the uh, game layer from being visible. Finally, we figured, you know, why stop at accelerating the canvas uh, when games need physics engines too? We included what we call direct box 2D uh, in, the, in the browser itself, uh, and that's a hardware accelerated um, version of box 2D via JavaScript. You can find that on our documentation page. Um, and then finally, I heard on somebody's wish list up here, I think it was Darius, sounds, multi-channel sounds. Uh, there we included a play sound API that actually provides uh, multi-channel sounds. So finally, to deploy all this, uh, we actually created a browser extension for iOS. Uh, it's called Mobius. It's also usable as a, as a browser it, itself. Um, but when you go to a page that needs direct canvas, Mobius, the presence of Mobius is detected and automatically switched in. And if Mobius doesn't exist, the same code can run in the standard mobile Safari browser, albeit slower, um, or on the uh, actual desktop web as a Facebook game, as an example. So that's it. I uh, encourage you to do it yourself. Uh, go to appmobi.com forward slash documentation. I'll actually follow that link just so you can find it. And all the relevant documentation is right there. Um, we did this already porting one game engine you guys may know of, ImpactJS. It's a pretty popular HTML5 game engine. Um, it's very doable with others. It works best in situations where you've got uh, uh, basically image objects as sprites against a, a background. Uh, it really does present very well on mobile and uh, come up to me later and I'll show it to you. Thanks a lot and uh, enjoy the drinks. Do a question? Hmm? Waiting for. Okay. Anybody have a question? <laughs> uh, you mentioned there was a uh, plugin for the iOS. Browser? Yes. And is that something the end user figures out how to do on their own, or is that something that you cause to get automatically downloaded and the user just has to click OK or something? We provide some detection code um, that will detect whether the extension is available. If it's not, it will direct them to the App Store to get it. It's a one time install. Um, and then after that, they can go on or they can bypass the. Uh, the choice to use the extension. Um, and is this app mobile also some kind of packaging solution like PhoneGap? If I want to deliver then this app to the app store and all that with your code? Yes, so we also have a hosted build system where you can package it as a hybrid app um, we, or you can deploy through Mobius. We also support inside of Mobius within the web pages the PhoneGap APIs. Um, so that's a 
different discussion, but you can actually do device accessing APIs in normal web pages uh, using Mobius. So you can make the phone shake, for example, when the, uh, when the barrels are hit by the seed in that Echo and Rico game. All right. Thank you.